So something we were chanting back in year three of Destiny 1 was buff primaries. My lord, just about everybody was constantly saying that. And for some reason, Bungie kind of held their ground. They never really came out in buff primaries. Instead, they continually slash special weapons. And it started with like various nerfs to shotguns, then it went from nerfing shotguns to adjusting snipers, to then just outright removing special ammo. Now naturally, this was extremely disruptive. I mean, essentially, you just gave everyone one hit kill weapons for nearly three years, and overnight, you took it away. But all of this, of course, was intentionally being done to groom us for Destiny 2. Destiny 2 moved to the double primary system. It was like Bungie's way of like lubing us up, right? And for so long, people were chanting primary buffs, that I think Bungie really thought this is what we wanted. Simultaneously though, they actually increased the time to kill values of all of our primary weapons inside of Destiny 2, making the game extremely slow in comparison to Destiny 1. Now fast forward to now. Forsaken has come, Shadowkeep has come, go fast updates, time to kill values have been dropped, a lot of things have changed. We've seen some huge benefits in our sandbox over the past few years, but we've also seen some things left behind. And I'm here to tell you guys, we're essentially back in another scenario where we are chanting buff primary weapons and if you're not chanting that you should be because all the issues that we talk about the weapons that really hurt us hell even the most recent video we made about broken weapons and exotics 90 percent of the things we mentioned on that list were special weapons and it's because special weapons are so good but it's also because primary weapons just ain't cutting it not unless you want to rock a last word constantly or a thorn or spare rations or not forgotten or Luna's how or some pulse rifle and laying in the back or sit in the way way back and rock a scout rifle today guys I want us to roll back real quick and take a look at a spreadsheet back in rise of iron post the doctrine of passing nerf and go over what the damage values used to be for many of our other weapons starting with our hand cannons so we take a look right here we have the lingering song oh yeah I love this hand cannon underneath it of course you got ill will notice the time to kill value isn't necessarily great there one second with a body shot time to kill value of 1.5 now I understand there might be some deviation there might actually be 1.07 seconds and 1.6 which is the equivalent of what we have inside of destiny 2 for our one tenths but just for comparison sakes, Judith, Lingering Song, Ill Will is in the same archetype or close enough to Duke, Bad News, Loud Lullaby. And on paper, this is where Bundy really starts to like mess with us, right? Because when we look at this, we go, all right, essentially the same, right? One second, 1.07 seconds not much of a difference but look at the damage values first up crit damage back in d1 for these weapons was just slightly higher at 95 per crit versus what our 110s do here in destiny 2 which is 91 per crit but notice your body shot damage a massive increase hitting 64 per body back inside of destiny 1 whereas here inside of destiny 2 they hit 50 per body. This, of course, results in both of these hand cannons across two different games still requiring three shots to kill, but one only requires one crit in two body, while the other one requires at least two crits in one body. At least. And when I say at least, any one, six resilience or higher, can still survive two crits in one body inside of Destiny 2. You see the problem here. Yes, on paper, they both look almost identical, but the lack of forgiveness is what's so punishing and the reason why you don't see more one tenths. Now, our next example, probably just as bad, is of course our 140s. Ostringer, DFA, Better Devils, Nation of Beasts, Kindle Orchid. These are our 140 round per minute hand cannons inside of Destiny 2. And the equivalent of that back inside of Destiny 1 was hand cannons like Ayas Luna, Imago Loop, Lord High Fixer. The difference is again, another scenario where the TTK values of these weapons are identical, but notice one takes one crit in two bodies, hitting at 86 per crit and 57 per body, while the other one here in D2 requires three crits, hitting only 70 per crit and 47 per body. The reason why this is an issue, guys, is that the game has consistently sped up. Mobility, overall reaction in the game, everything has sped up and ramped up, even surpassing that of Destiny 1. The problem is, is these primary weapons have not kept up with that mobility. And this is extremely apparent when you just take a look here at these 140 round per minute hand cannons and you notice the difference there in damage between what they used to hit back in Destiny 1 and what they hit now here in Destiny 2. Now granted, I'm not jumping up and saying that 140s should one crit and two body. But what I am asking for is that 140s should at least two crit and one body on high resilience guardians. And 110s should definitely one crit and two body, maybe on only five or six resilience, 
and below, and then everything after that, two crit, one body. These are just some examples, but hand cannons definitely shout out to us the most. And you see some deviation there with your 150s as well. Hand cannons back inside of Destiny 1, like Word of Crota, the Revelator, Water Star. Those hand cannons could two crit in one body, and they actually had a faster time to guild value at 0.8 seconds. Where they lacked, though, was their range stat. So a lot of people just ended up using things like Is Luna, Amago Loop, those hand cannons, Paladrome, simply because they offer so much more forgiveness. So I understand, guys, we talk about TTK values, and that's an important value, but forgiveness is equally as important. Now, moving on to our next weapon type, let's take a look at auto rifles. So auto's kind of changed a bit, right? Like, we don't have a 900 round per minute auto inside of Destiny 1 or Destiny 2. Destiny 1, we did. Was it 900 rounds per minute? Doctrine of Passing, Atheon's Epilogue, Unbent Tree. Pretty sure those auto rifles either shot at 900 rounds per minute or maybe even a thousand. Regardless, it was fast. Now, inside of Destiny 1, I'm pretty sure we didn't have quote unquote high impact auto rifles, right? Like we had auto rifles that hit hard, but all of them were actually considered like on the same level as precision auto rifles or 450s that are currently present inside of Destiny 2. But if you had something like, say, a Shadow Price back in Destiny 1 or something like Genesis Chain and rolled it with Focus Fire, this of course would actually throw the damage to the equivalent of like high impact auto rifles inside of Destiny 2. So Bungie just actually just scratched that and just gave us high impact auto rifles inside of D2. But just comparing the damage to damage, just comparing things like Grim Citizen, Shadow Price, Zero Day Dilemma, to things like Horror Story, Ringing Now, Prosecutor, Uriel's Gift, Time to Kill wise, they're pretty much the same. Again, another scenario here where nothing really changes. And on top of that, they both require six crits and two body to get the kill. But notice the body shot time to kill values for our D1 auto rifles in this archetype. 1.2 seconds in comparison to 1.33 seconds. You see, back inside of Destiny 1, they hit 27 per crit and 21 per body. 21 per body. Here inside of Destiny 2, our 450 round per minute auto rifles, things like Uriel's Gift, hits 26 per crit, so not much deviation there and your precision damage, but 18 per body. That's how you slash your forgiveness. Now, I know many of us wanna jump up and say, whoa, whoa, shouldn't we force people to land precision shots that's how you create skill gap you're right you are right in a perfect world where there's only primary weapons that's a completely logical response but in d2 where we got all kinds of crazy special weapons that can kill from 9 10 meters and the fact that our maps cater to that play style which is even worse you could sit there with that Uriel's gift or that auto rifle all day long and that mind bender will still bend you over and you know what's so crazy about these damage values is that back inside of rise of iron were we in an auto rifle meta no these are damage values after all auto rifles have been toned down tremendously especially in comparison to what they were in year one of destiny one and they still had more forgiveness than what we have here in d2 now pulse rifles pulse rifles are actually in a really good spot even in comparison to what they were back in destiny one pretty similar time to kill values at your high impacts you still have that 0.67 ttk value and 0.73 for your four bursts pulse rifles or aggressives as they're called here in destiny 2 you actually have a better time to kill value with your adaptive pulse rifles inside of d2 than in comparison to its counterparts inside of d1 at 0.93 seconds and this of course was after the clever dragon nerf which to me was a really weird nerf as a ttk value for something like clever back inside of d1 before its nerf was actually 0.8 seconds bungie just went in there chopped the damage down and essentially gave it the same time to kill value as things like hawksaw and suros pdx 45 which was really awkward as those are supposed to be two very different archetypes of pulse rifles but they both had the same time to kill value one just took more shots than the other really awkward currently right now when i sit here and i compare the time to kill values though between d1 to d2 when it comes to our pulse rifles if any Anything should jump out to you guys rapid fire pulse rifles in d2 have been sitting essentially at the same damage values or close to what clever dragon was doing pre-nerf which is why it still blows my mind i don't see more people using rapid fire pulse rifles either way it goes pulses are still in a good spot moving on to scout rifles scout rifles are very much the same from what they were back inside of d1 in terms of optimal time to kill values but notice the deviation there in that body shot time to kill value that's what's killed it man and i'm not saying that you should be landing body shots obviously if you're looking to get the three tap whether you play d1 or d2 with that Kakinus, or that Colavance's Duty, or that Transfiguration, or Talons of the Eagle, you want to land all three crits. But it's extremely nice that if you happen to miss a shot and land a body shot instead, 
you're not screwed. High impact scout rifles back inside of Destiny 1. 1 1.6 time to kill value for his body shot in comparison to a whopping two second time to kill value here inside of D2. You know how garbage that is? Two freaking seconds? You know how long two seconds is? What is this, Overwatch? Now let's take a look at our precision scout rifles. Things like Oxygen, Tango, Nameless Midnight. These scout rifles have the same time to kill value, optimally back inside of Destiny 1, but notice the body shot TTK value. 1.33 seconds inside of D1 in comparison to 1.67 seconds inside of D2. And you see the deviation there in damage, right? 55 per crit compared to 61 per crit inside of D1. But even more criminal than that, the body shot damage inside of D1 was 41 damage per body compared to 35 damage per body now. This is what's killer, man. And this is why you lose gunfights in those situations where you've got a guy closing the gap on you with the spare rations or a mind bender or something. You're not trying to point those weapons out. There's a reason why people use them. If you happen to miss with these weapons, you are screwed because those body shot time to kill values are terrible. Don't worry, fellas, it gets worse. Let's take a look at our lightweight scout rifles. 0.9 second optimal time to kill value. Still three crit in one body. But again, another scenario. Body shot TTK value. Not quite two seconds here inside of D2, but 1.8 seconds. 1.8 in comparison to 1.5. Distant star. Angel's advocate. He's hit a whopping 57 per crit and 38 per body. Doesn't seem that big of a deviation from what we hit now at 54 per crit and 31 per body, but it's the little things, especially in that body shot time to kill, that will make all the difference. Now we haven't even gotten into rapid fire scouts, but yeah, they need some love too. Either way it goes, it's very apparent that primary weapons have to be elevated. They have to. And I've kind of just been sitting around waiting for the primary buff to be mentioned. And it's not the optimal time to kill values. Every time we ever talk about primaries these days to talk about buffing them, people are like, oh my God, I don't want to play Call of Duty. No, that's not it, man. These body shot time to kill values though, on these scout rifles, these auto rifles these high impact hand cannons there's a reason why you don't see anyone use them and it's because they are so unforgiving and it's not like they have some great benefit like when we talk about 140 round per minute hand cannons it's not like we can just jump them and go hey you know what it still takes three crits. It has a slower time to kill value than 150s, but it's got a hell of a lot of range. No, it doesn't, because they both got the same blanket nerf there to the range. So why would you use a 140 round per minute hand cannon over a 150, unless you're using an exotic? And see, that's the thing that keeps popping up. That's the thing that Bungie kind of throws back at us. It's like, hey, yes, these weapons are weaker, but the argument for 140s is, well, look at Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades is still good. You can't trash 10 weapons to simply elevate one. Currently, right now we have entire archetypes with substantially higher time to kill values and less forgiveness than what we had back in destiny one while simultaneously playing in a game environment that is much faster that no doesn't have the one shot killing abilities that we had back inside of destiny one but pure mobility is resulting in people outright getting out of situations that they have no sense getting out of there's no reason why i come around a corner and i point a misfit at a guy and i start blowing my load into him and i completely catch him off guard and he can just roll out of that situation. It makes no sense. And had I had some higher damage there in my body shot time to kill value, I would have probably got the kill. At some point, Bungie is gonna have to elevate these primary weapons sooner rather than later. So guys, that is our breakdown today for primaries. We didn't go over everything. I didn't go over things like sidearms or shotguns or snipers. Things started to get kind of twisted toward the end of year three inside of Destiny 1. But I wanted to touch up on the weapons that I very much enjoy playing with. I enjoy playing with high impact hand cannons. I love a number of different auto rifles. I want to use mini scout rifles, but it's not just the fact that these maps aren't catering to those play styles. It's simply because those guys that can push the gap on you at extreme speeds can't be stopped in time. It's just simple math. And it's not that you're not a good player. It's not that you don't got good aim, man. You're just shooting a Nerf gun. So Bungie, please, please buff these things. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.